One of the first things I also, the next thing I want to talk about is palliative care. And the Minister has made comments in the House today uh, espousing the great investments that are being made uh, by their government in health care, but not really talking about any specific investments with respect to palliative care. And I think that's a critical thing to look at when we discuss this legislation. And I want to remind the Minister that legislation that was passed uh, an act amend providing for the development of a framework for palliative care in Canada that was passed in the previous Parliament in 2017, it clearly states this, whereas the final report stated that in the preamble, whereas the final report stated that a request for physician-assisted death cannot be truly voluntary if the option of proper palliative care is not available to alleviate the person's suffering. So this is, a, this is, a, this is a, uh, something that was passed by this Parliament. So when we look at expanding the scope of medically uh, assisted death without also expanding the scope of the availability of palliative care, I think we're doing an incredible disservice to Canadians because the availability of palliative care in this country is poor at best. I'm going to speak about this personally just for a moment. Both my parents uh, suffered from terminal cancer. Uh, my mother was not able to get into a palliative care facility because there was no palliative care facility available for her, and so she passed away in the hospital. My father also was not able to get into palliative care, but fortunately his illness was longer than my mother's, or unfortunately, depending how you look on it, and we were able to bring in private home care that was able to you know, ease his suffering and make sure that he was being taken care of but also there was no way that he was going to be able to get into palliative care within the scope of his illness. And this is something that is affecting Canadians from coast to coast to coast. And it's something that the minister has rushed to introduce this bill. Why would the minister not have introduced corollary legislation or legislation in tandem or announce the increases in funding for palliative care? When we talk about my own riding of Dufferin Caledon, we have a fantastic hospice for palliative care. Uh, it is called Bethel Hospice. They only have approximately 15 beds. That is the palliative care options in my riding of Dufferin Caledon. Approximately 200,000 people, 15 palliative care beds. You can imagine there's a significant number of people who are not able to get into palliative care. And therefore, the option of medically assisted death becomes far more attractive for someone who's not able to enter into uh, a palliative care facility. And I would repeat that that is clearly a violation of legislation that was passed by uh, this House. When people do not have the option for proper palliative care, their consent for medically, uh, medically assisted death is significantly in question. So I'm extraordinarily concerned by the lack of any plan by this government to deal with investments in palliative care.